Hey, what's good people? CJ Williams from Coachless Theory. In this video, we're taking it to Vegas and ranking Neo's albums from worst to first. This will not include any compilations or Christmas albums. So do us a favor, subscribe to Coachless Theory and hit that like button, leave a comment. I'd appreciate it. Now on to the video. Number seven, Good Man. Okay, this has nothing to do with recency bias because some of Neo's recent singles go hard, but the last album he put out in 2018 was not it. He continued in his international bag with songs like Nights Like This, Santos and Caribbean vibes on the second single, Push Back. Easily the best song on the album though is LA Nights, a mid-tempo, bouncy track that is perfect for Ride's down Rodeo. But much of the album feels more subdued than his previous works overall. It was released on Motown and had a decent debut at number 33 on Billboard, but decent isn't what we expect from Neo. Number six, Libra Scale. Neo's fourth album was based on the idea of three men forced to choose between money, power, and fame, versus love. Check out the extended video for Champagne Life to see the origin story. Along with this morality play, the 10 track album was billed as a tribute to the king of pop, Michael Jackson, a year after his death in 2009. You can hear his influence in some of the ad-libs on the album. Neo handled the songwriting as usual and turned out three singles, the aforementioned Champagne Life, One in a Million, and Beautiful Monster. Each one doing okay in the US, but Beautiful Monster reached number one all the way in the UK. Number five, R.E.D. Realizing Every Dream. Neo moved his compound entertainment imprint from Def Jam to Motown, joining the historic label as an artist and senior vice president for A&R. In that role, he was responsible for producing and mentoring current Motown artists, as well as finding new talent to bolster the label's roster. Neo did find new talent. He also found new collaborators for himself and on this upcoming album, originally titled The Cracks in Mr. Perfect. Neo worked with Australian songwriter Sia. Their song, Let me love you until you learn to love yourself was a massive single certified platinum in the u.s and two million copies in the uk the two other singles lazy love and don't make them like you were less commercially successful but solid r&b tracks on red neo continued to bounce around between r&b dance pop and edm and earn himself the hall david starlight award of the songwriters hall of fame honoring his impact through his original songs Number four, nonfiction. We know Neo can sing almost anything, but nonfiction is where we get the most urban sounding records from the Sin City singer. He has two bangers on this album we know you remember. She Knows, featuring Juicy J, and Money Can't Buy with Jeezy. Although we can't help but wonder how big She Knows would have been with a better rap feature. Bars like There's No I in Team, But I Got My Eye On You fall completely flat. All this ice in my rolling, no wonder I play it cool. Ain't no I in team, but I got my eyes on you. Eh, come on, bro. There are less memorable but worthwhile appearances from T.I. and Schoolboy Q. Even with all this genre hopping, what's good about Neo is that it never feels like he's trying to do or be something he's not. This is Neo's sixth album, so at this point, he knew what was working and continued to execute. Number three, Because of You. Neo didn't waste any time getting back into the studio to record his sophomore album between 06 and 07. The album starts off with the lead single and title track, Because of You. He sticks to his formula of upbeat R&B that gives you the familiar themes that also wouldn't hurt in the club. On Crazy, he gets a verse from former Def Jam president Jay-Z, who is also largely responsible for signing Neo to the label. Other highlights on this album are his duet with the newly minted EGOT winner Jennifer Hudson and Say It if you're looking for the R&B. Ain't Thinking About You and Angel if you're looking for pop. Because of You debuted at number one and went on to earn a Grammy nomination for Best Contemporary R&B Album. Number two, in my own words. A year after writing Let Me Love You for Mario, Neo had a deal with Def Jam. A lead single a year later, and a year after that, a debut album. In my own words was Neo's opportunity to step out front and he never looked back. The album debuted at number one on Billboard 200, selling over 300,000 copies its first week. Neo's music was inherently dance R&B. He could take even the most heartbreaking or tense situations and make you dance the pain away. Case in point, so Sick, a breakup song that went to number one on Billboard Hot 100 and sold more than a million copies. The other singles, Stay, featuring Petey Crack, and Sexy Love do the same thing. A couple of other standout joints, 
It Just Ain't Right, co-written by Mark DeBarge, also using a DeBarge sample, and Get Down Like That featuring Ghostface Killer, where he essentially swears black men don't cheat. It's all music and not bogged down with skits and interludes that we've seen from other artists. Overall, they help to further balance this well put together platinum selling debut album. Number one, Year of the Gentleman. 2008 proved to be a good year for Neo. Two Grammy nods for the album and three more for the singles as well. 250,000 copies sold first week were not too shabby for the Arkansas born Vegas bred singer. There's something on here for everyone. He leans right into the dance lane heavy on Closer and keeps the tempo up with club oriented jams on Nobody and Single. Two anthems for the ladies as well, Miss Independent and She Got Her Own featuring Jamie Foxx and Fabulous, which is the most urban track on the album. Mad, Why Does She Stay, and Lie to Me for the Relationship Set Still Go Today. The diversity on the album just goes to show you the extent of his artistry and intent to grow his audience by not just writing for others, but as the main attraction. For example, Neo wrote the song Single, it was recorded and released by New Kids on the Block in August of 08, and then Neo released his own version in September. You don't see that too often. Released by Compound Entertainment and Def Jam Recordings, his third album may not be the biggest selling album of Neo's career, but it's had one of the biggest impacts and proof of his staying power. That's it for today's list. How do we do? Let us know in the comments below, and don't forget, hit that like button and subscribe to Coachless Theory so you don't miss a list. I'm CJ Williams, and I'm out.